What do you regret in life? What do you wish hadn't happened? Or if you had your time again, you would try and do things differently? I think um, this is one of the motivations behind the writing of the 13th chapter of John's Gospel, which is this account of the Last Supper. And I think when John, the Gospel writer, was writing this, he was, if you like, answering one particular question. And that question was asked after the events, time and time again, which is, why didn't you stop Jesus? Why didn't you stop Judas? After all, Jesus says, he says, you know, um, one of you will betray me. And then Judas slopes off at a certain point. And you get these details in John's Gospel, which is that they try to find out from Jesus who's the one who's going to betray him. And then when Judas leaves the room, it says, well, we just thought it was because he was the one who collected the coin purse and Jesus must have asked him to do something. Or perhaps, um, you know, he was going to use it to give to the poor or, or something like that. That they're kind of explaining away because I think John, the gospel writer, can never, he certainly can't forgive Judas. And I think there's part of him which can't forgive himself for letting all this happen. At the same time, of course, in a sense, it all had to happen, and that's absolutely at play in John's Gospel. But what it leads me to think about is how do we live with ourselves when there are things which have happened we were a part of, we regret, and yet there's nothing we can do to change it. And I wonder about myself. I've got, I, I had an encounter with some people who was at... It was a university reunion, and I asked this person if they'd had a good time, and they said no, not or very mixed, and they found the culture pretty tricky. And when I'd been at university, I'd been pretty blasé. I thought it was all kind of all not quite jolly hockey sticks, but you know, it was all all right. And she'd had such a, a different experience that also when she described the things which were problematic in the culture of the college where I was at university. Years later, I was listening to it, but I also could recognise a lot of what she said was true. And I thought to myself, how could I have let that culture be like that? Why didn't I challenge it? And I was turning it over in my head, and there was a degree of frustration because it was too late now. I mean, it was 25 years too late. I was way off. Why didn't I change it? And of course you can't change the past like that. that, that's gone. What you can do is shape what's in front of us now, and you can shape the future. And in the same way that John and Peter can't forgive themselves for not stopping Judas doing what he's doing, at the same time they are the people who become the rocks of the church to come. They are the people who build the Christian communities, which tell the stories of Jesus' passion, death and resurrection. So maybe in that kernel of regret which haunts the 13th chapter of John's Gospel, we should also recognise the people writing it were writing in from the position of having done the most extraordinary work in setting up the church. And so when we have moments of regret, perhaps we can translate them into a new hope for a new future. It may guide our present actions.